हेलो एवरी वन ओ टू देस्ट विंड बाय शैली वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ ओ टू देस्ट विंड इन द फर्स्ट स्टैंड ऑफ द सेकेंड पार्ट शैली राइट्स दाव ऑन हु स्ट्रीम मिड द स्टीप स्काइज कमोशन दाव ओ यू वेस्ट विन ऑन हु स्ट्रीम ऑन हु करंट मिट द स्टीप स्काइज कमोशन अमंग अमिट्स द स्टीप स्काइज कमोशन देर इज अ कमोशन इन द स्काई देर इज अ स्टॉम इन द स्काई बिकॉज ऑफ द वेस्ट विन नाउ वी सी हियर दैट द ट्रीज एंड द लिव लीव्स विच वर एक्चुअल or physical in the previous stanza they are all now metaphorical and in this way shelley has tried to connect the two stanzas which are bound to be closer together in this manner so in the previous stanza or in the first part shelley had disca- described the activities of the west wind on land in this stanza he will describe the activities of west wind in the sky on the land the west wind drives the dead leaves of various colors yellow black pale and red which are scattered and the winged seeds also are scattered far and wide by the west wind it buries the leaves and the seeds under the earth as if they were dead bodies and it buries them like dead bodies in their graves graves until the spring comes then they sprout and bear flowers and fill the valley with their sweet fragrance so west wind is depicted as a destroyer destroyer of the dead leaves and preserver of the seeds which are buried underground in this stanza the west wind is active in the air in the sky and so shelly continues writing thou on whose stream mid the steep skies commotion loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed the steep skies commotion means as though the west wind was a storm in the forest of the sky that had caused the loose clouds to be shed like leaves from trees the sky is said to be steep because of the height of the sky it is very high so he says that the loose clouds fall down from the sky as if the trees are shedding their leaves shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean when we shake a tree uh, the branches of a tree the leaves and the flowers fall down similarly he says that the clouds are coming down from the sky as if someone has shook the tangled boughs the tangled or interwoven branches of heaven and ocean then he writes angels of rain and lightning there are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge he says that angels of rain and lightning angels here stands for the foretellers who can or the precursors who can tell in advance about the future he says that foretellers of rain and lightning are spread on the blue surface of the west wind on thine airy surge on your airy or forward motion we can see the foretellers or the angels who announce that rain and lightning are going to happen like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce minaed even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height 
the locks of the approaching storm. So Shelley says that in Shelley introduces a new image. He says that loose cloudlets are like the uplifted hair of some frenzied devotees of Bacchus, Bacchus of the or the god of wine. Minade is literally a frenzied woman. Minades were frenzy, frenzied votaries of Dionysus or Bacchus. They were strangely attired and they indulged in wild dances. So, in the beginning we see that Shelley again addresses the west wind as a person. He begins by saying, Thou, thou you, on whose stream mid the steep skies commotion. He calls the wind as one who will lose the clouds and shake the leaves of the boughs or branches of heaven and ocean. Then he continues by saying that angels of rain and lightning there are spread on the blue surface of thy, thine airy surge. Again he refers to the wind as a spiritual being. A spiritual being who is more powerful than angels because the angels of rain and lightning are described as being spread on the blue surface of the wind. Shelley then describes these angels like the bright hair on the head of an even greater being. In the 17th line, Shelley uses tangled boughs of heaven and earth. He conveys the meaning that the horizon is indistinguishable. It is indistinguishable because of the clouds which stress stretch from the horizon to the zenith and therefore the sky and sea are described as trees with their branches which are intermingled or meshed together. Then he compares the wind to a fierce minade or the spiritual being that used to be found around the Greek god Dionysus and this being that was also described as having hair like angels. Thus the poet describes the wind as a being like a god with angels of hair. These angels of rain and lightning reveal that the storm is on the way. So, continuing his awe or wonder concerning the might of the west wind, Shelley hails the west wind as a creator of clouds and a living stream in the sky, a stream that moves the trees of heaven as well as of the ocean. Then he gives us a vision of angels, angels that flow with the wind and that in his simile they are like the bright hair streaming from the head of some fierce menad. So Shelley takes us to the height of the skies and then to the distant horizon where we see the locks of the approaching storm. He conveys the idea that a storm will come which will bring about changes on the earth. Thus we see that in the first two stanzas, first two cantos, Shelley praises the power of the wind, the might of the wind and gives a number of similes, metaphors and allusions. 
just in order to show what the wind can do how powerful the wind is so the wind can loosen the wind can spread the wind can shed the wind can burst we shall continue with stanza 5th and 6th of canto 2 of in part 4 of shelley's ode to the west wind